Why do you live where you live? You see, the reason you live where you live is because God knew you needed to be there in that spot at this time because it was your best chance of getting to know him the way he wanted you to know him. If God chose for you to live here for this time, that means he's got a purpose for you living here at this time. I've learned in the last couple of months that on at least two different occasions, we've had situations in Lafayette that were very close to some of the situations that led to riots in other parts of the world. The Apostle Paul tells me that I am supposed to pray for the governing authorities and submit to their power. But Paul says there's another principle I also have to hold up, and that is the principle of bearing one another's burdens. On the one hand, we have to support, submit to, pray for, ask for God's will to be done in the context of our governing authorities. On the other hand, we have to stand with in solidarity our brothers and sisters who are facing difficult burdens, even if those burdens relate to the governing authorities. Join me in prayer that God would give them all the wisdom and the courage that they need. Join me in prayer that God would give them all the compassion that they need so that our society our city can be filled with God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven. I'm standing here in front of IU Arnett Hospital. We're in this environment where almost anything associated with the COVID pandemic has become debatable and political. And the reason we're praying for the people in the building behind me is that they have been stressing out about this whole thing for more than a year now. But now, the nurses and medical professionals, particularly the nurses, are facing a new crisis. Uh, there's no good way to describe it other than a kind of fatigue. You see, what's going on is that now we know how to prevent coronavirus spreading. And yet still on a daily basis, new patients come in. Ask God with me to give them so much patience and so much love for the people that they see that none of the other COVID fatigue would start to weave its way into their hearts. I wanted to film in front of the mall, uh, but they have policies against that sort of thing. You see, one of the lies of the American economy is that we have to be people who are constantly wanting more. The Apostle Paul, whenever he makes a list of sins, he always puts greed near the top of that list. We need to be people who know what it means to participate in an economy that works well for everybody while not falling prey to the greed that is so selfishly motivated. Jesus, in the Sermon on the Mount, says that God sends his sun to shine and the rain to fall on the righteous and the unrighteous. Righteous versus unrighteous is literally the most important division in all of the history of humanity. God is going to separate the righteous from the unrighteous and the righteous will go into his presence for eternity and the unrighteous will be banished from his presence for eternity. But God sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. And if you're a Republican, you need to remember that today God sent some rain on the Democrats. And if you're a Democrat, you need to remember that God sent some rain on the Republicans. If God loves all of us so much that he is willing to unite us through the death, burial, resurrection of his son and the gift of eternity to all of us equally, then certainly we can find a way to be united with each other. Hey everybody, today I'm going to take you on a little bit of a tour to a number of different churches. Where we are now is at the Upper Room Christian Fellowship in West Lafayette. Here I am in front of Abundant Love Outreach Church. I'm coming to you here from Living Truth of Christ Church. They purchased this building and like within two years, paid off the mortgage completely. I'm just so impressed with the commitment of their church family. And so the last place we're stopping is here at Innovation Church. You see, Jesus' final prayer before he went to the cross, the night before he went to the cross, he said, Father, make them one. And so let's pray that God would bring a unity to this community. As people who are in the churches and the church leaders decide to focus on Jesus more than anything else.